Hello, this video is for 6.1 vectors in the plane. It is one application of trigonometry. So the first question is, what is a vector? It is a directed line segment, otherwise known as a ray, that has both magnitude and direction. Magnitude and direction. So main things we use vectors for would be something like velocity or acceleration or force where we are acting on an object in a certain direction. If I were to sketch a vector Notice I mentioned it looks like a ray. So here is a vector. Let's say it went over to A on the x-axis and B on the y-axis. There's a couple important pieces. This first, the start, is known as the initial point. And where it ends is the terminal point. And so if I'm starting at 0, 0 and going to the point A comma B, I can name this vector A, B. These brackets, they are known as chevrons actually, denote that we are talking about a vector. And a lot of times we use letters like U and V to represent a vector. This is known as the component form of our vector. So let's look at this a little bit more using something called the head minus tail rule. If a ray has an initial point x1, y1, and a terminal point you guessed it, x2, y2, then it represents the vector, we'll say v, x2 minus x1 comma y2 minus y1. Let's sketch this as a drawing. Here is, we'll say, our initial point, x1, y1, and here will be our terminal point, x2, y2. If I draw in my vector here, oh, sorry, that was really off, but the general, you get the general piece. Um, if I draw in my vector here, I can find what this vector's component form is by taking head minus tail. Notice how it's x2 and y2 first. So the head is the thing that has the arrow on it. This piece often is referred to as A as we just saw and this piece is often referred to as B and again this is the component form component form, which really is just saying this vector is made up of these two pieces. We've got two vectors here, and it's pretty easy for me to see that this first vector can be named as 3, 4. 3 minus 0 is 3, 4 minus 0 is 4. And if I look at this vector, uh, negative 1 minus 4, negative 1 minus a negative 4. Sorry, I got to do that correctly. Well, that's 3, and 6 minus 2 is 4. Oops, what do we notice about these? These two vectors, though they are in different positions, have the same magnitude. We also notice that they are pointing in the exact same direction. These are known as equivalent vectors. 
vectors that have the same direction, which I can tell because the slopes are the same, and they have the same magnitude, which we haven't totally gone through yet, but magnitude is looking basically at the length. So equivalent vectors are vectors that have the same direction and the same magnitude. So then the question you might have is, well, what is magnitude of a vector? Think of it as the length of the vector. And so if we consider vector v, which starts at x1, y1, and goes to x2, Ah, y2. So here's vector v. The magnitude of this, we denote magnitude with absolute value symbols. Well, it's equal to the distance between these points. So what's our distance formula? The square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and that's our magnitude. I mean, that's like full stop. But if we had the component form of this vector, a comma b, then the magnitude would be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, because a is equal to x2 minus x1. And b is equal to y2 minus y1. So these are two different formulas for magnitude, but they are really saying the exact same thing. Blank versions of these notes are online, but I am going to put up some of the examples we will do in class. So if you are interested in writing this down for your notes, you can pause and write down this problem. Or we've got these two problems. Again, you can pause the video if you are interested in writing them down. Otherwise, there's a little bit more to this section, specifically vector addition and scalar multiplication. So we are going to consider u and v as two different vectors. u has the components u1, u2, and v has the components v1, v2. And k is going to be any real number. So k is just going to be a constant. If I want to find vector u plus vector v, it works out how you would hope, where we are going to add the pieces that are in the same spot. So u1 plus v1 and u2 plus v2. How does this work if I'm visually representing it? Well, let's say this is u and this is vector v. What we really are doing is basically taking this vector v and kind of moving it up here and the resultant vector, the vector that ends as u plus v is this vector from the start of u to the end of v. Then the other piece of this, so that was our vector addition, is scalar multiplication. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I take some constant and multiply it by a vector, I'm just going to be distributing that into the components. So k times u1, k times u2. And how does this look? Well, okay, here's u, we'll say. And if I multiply it by 3, 3 times u is 3 times as long. That works out hopefully, how you would kind of expect and hope in your mind. Another thing we are going to introduce right now is unit vectors. So a unit vector is a vector whose magnitude is 1. The, basically, the length of this vector is 1. And if you want to create a unit vector 
in the direction of any vector. So let's say u is going to be our unit vector and v is the vector we're trying to create a unit vector for. I'm going to take vector v and divide it by its magnitude. So u is the unit vector in the direction of v. It's going to be, if v, let's say, is like that long, that's v, u will be in this direction, but only one unit long. We're basically making it shorter. Our most common vectors that are unit vectors are known as our standard unit vectors. And these two are the vectors that start at the origin and go to the points 0, 1 or 1, 0. So if I go from the origin to the point 0, 1, this is vector j whose component form is 0, 1. And the magnitude of j, the length of it, is just 1. And if I start at the origin and I go to the point 1, 0, to make that look correct, this is known as vector i, which in its component form is 0, 1. Oops. Ah. Hold on. And because it is a unit vector, a vector whose length is 1, I also know that the magnitude of i is equal to 1. Why would unit vectors be something we would need? Well, they could tell us that we need to find, let's say, some new vector w, which is 5i plus 7j. Well, let's consider this. 5, we know that i is the vector 0, 1, and j is the vector. Oops, I made a mistake. Ah, I'm so sorry. I is the vector 1, 0. Sorry about that. Hopefully you caught that. Uh, J is the vector 0, 1. With our scalar multiplication, I really just distribute. So I have 5, 0 plus 0, 7. And with our vector addition. I'm going to add the pieces in the first. So 5 plus 0 is 5. 0 plus 7, 7. Vector w is, in its component form, 5 comma 7. It also hopefully kind of makes sense. We are taking five copies of i. So like if i is here, five copies of i would be right here. We are taking J, which is this little guy, and seven copies of it, so we're super tall. And then because we're adding them, we would be sliding this over and we would end with this vector W, which is five, seven. There's a little bit more in this section, but that was a lot. Okay, I'm so sorry. I kind of switched in my mind what we were going to do. I'm going to make this an entire video. It's going to be a little longer, but I'm only going to assign piece by piece. All right, so we've got our standard unit vectors, i and j. That's what we just looked at. And then you might be thinking, you mentioned at the beginning this was saying that this is all about trigonometry, and so what about trig? So let's consider something called resolving a vector. Don't want that as yellow. Resolving a vector. Let's think about our unit circle, our very best friend. Oh, that was terrible. 
that's okay. And let's say here's pi over 4. So I know this is the point, the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2. And I could make this a vector. This is vector, we'll say u. u is equal to, because it's going from, from the origin, 0, 0, to the point square root of 2 over 2, I know the component form is square root of 2 over 2. Oops, comma, square root of 2 over 2. I also know sine is y, so sine of pi over 4 is equal to the square root of 2 over 2, and cosine is x, cosine of pi over 4 is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So I haven't done anything out of the ordinary. I've really just stated things that we know to be true. And then last but not least, I also know that the magnitude of this vector is 1. How do I know that? Well, if this is the unit circle, the length of this right here is 1 because it's the radius of the circle. So how do I connect this to any vector? Well, it's something called, like I said before, resolving a vector. For any vector v, if v has an angle of theta, then the components of v can be computed in the following way. The magnitude of v times cosine of theta and the magnitude of v times sine of theta. Think about that for a second. We know that sine is y and cosine is x. If I know this angle down here, I can find the x and the y values, my sine and my cosine of that angle, from the unit circle. And then to make it the vector that I need, I might need to make it bigger by multiplying it by the magnitude of that vector, the length of that vector. So that's resolving a vector, our connection to trig. Let me see. That is our last piece. I'm going to flip through some exact examples. So if you want to pause the video and write this down, find the components of vector v with a directional angle of 120 and a magnitude of 8. Here's another one. Find the magnitude and direction and directional angle of each vector. And last but not least, this very good problem of an airplane. So if you want to pause the video and write this down, that's probably a good idea. Otherwise, have a good rest of your day.